Let me just start off by saying I am so impressed when it comes to these four palettes that I'm about to talk about. I just, oh, like making me happy. And I did film this look for you guys. So let's go ahead and jump on into the video. Hey guys, this is Ashley. Welcome on back to my channel. So I am happy to be here today. And usually this would be like me ranking the last few palettes that I tried, but honestly, I cannot rank these. But before we get started, let me go ahead and introduce myself. If you are new to this channel, welcome. And if you're only but goody, welcome on back. My name is Ashley. I have a doctorate in pharmacy and I love makeup. So that's how you get Dr. Ash and her makeup. But please just call me Asher Ashley and eyeshadow is my jam and is one of my favorite things to talk about and that's what we are talking about 
today. So normally what I do, I rank the palettes that I last tried or that I showed you videos on. And it's my way to come back and do a review, let you know how I like them and all of that great jazz. And it kind of makes it fun to rank them. But honestly, I really cannot rank these four palettes that I have tried lately. I mean, they are just the creme de la creme. They just make me happy in terms of the color story. They make me happy as far as the performance. And I just don't have enough good things to say about them. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about these because I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to give you my thoughts about the palettes, but I mean, spoiler alert. I mean, spoiler alert. I've already told you I'm happy. <laughs> the formula is great. I mean, the color stories are great, but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to just go ahead and start with the two palettes that I picked up from Odin's Eye. And this was the legendary Diversa collection. And I only picked up two out of the three palettes, which was Annette's Makeup's Corners palette right here. And then I also picked up Tina, the fancy face. I picked up her palette. Oh my goodness. Now let me tell you something. As Beauty and the Frizz reminds me, I almost missed out on both of these palettes because I had picked up Odin's Eye. I picked up their Norns collection, the big palette and you know, just one mini palette, the Erd palette. And I tried it and I wasn't so thrilled with the formula. And I talk about that a lot of times when you experience new eyeshadow formulas. Sometimes they can be a little tricky to work with. Sometimes you just don't quite understand. Sometimes you're just taking a little bit of back. And I, I, I was just unsure. So, but then I was like, oh my gosh, this is Tina's palette. I've been waiting for her to have a collab forever because I've been watching her forever. And then Annette's palette is just calling me so badly, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to retry, you know, one of my palettes. So I retried the Herb palette and I was like, this is bomb. I like this. I, I am, hmm, I am here for it. So I was like, oh, I'm definitely getting this collection. So like I said, I picked up these two palettes. So let's go ahead and jump in with Annette's palette first. It is a beautiful grungy color story and it's based off of, um, I guess like a fable on wolves in her culture. I believe she's Norwegian, but look at this beautiful color story and you have a dual chrome right here which i have on my lids called eternal and like i said i did film this look for you so you'll be able to see it but everything in here is just actually really wonderful the only shade that i really had an issue with and it's not really even a large issue but the shade antipode right here I did find it to be just a tiny bit patchy, but it's nothing that I cannot work with. It's not a bad shade. I, and I tried to figure out if it was like my primers that I was using because typically I do use my Urban Decay Primer Potion right here in the shade Caffeine. Or a lot of times I'll use my Juvia's Place Primer. And on both particular primers, it's like, mm, they just seem a little, uh, I don't know. And I usually use the same brushes that I use for all of my shadows. So I was just, I wasn't mm, the happiest about that. But it's still a gorgeous shade and it's really, really pretty. I just see so many color combos that you can make with this look. Even with the dual chrome, it reflects so well with so many different shades. And I just think that it's absolutely Stunning. I mean, the, you have this golden green. You also have this white color that just kind of takes on the shift of basically anything that you have by it and gives a light, nice lightness to the eye. You have some beautiful, deep, grungy matte tones. You can do a lot of nice purple looks, purple and blue. You can stick with the green family. So you can have some brighter looks and some more or less effortless looks. I know if you take the shade of Blaze right here and go in with uh, Haiti, you can get a more off the look and even just pairing this in a crease. So I find that you have a lot of shades right here to put a lot of definition in the crease. You can get a lot of deep, dark, kind of vampy looks. You can get some looks that are more ethereal. So I just feel like it's just so many different color combinations and 
I just really love the blues with the greens and the magenta and the dark. And then you have a black that's not too intimidating. So it's just a well-executed, thought-out palette. Not to mention, Odin's Eye killed it with the packaging. You know, this is embossed right here. It's nice and textured. You have some holographic imagery right here. I mean, it's just so beautifully done. And I mean, talk about impressed when it comes to these palettes. I knew that they had great quality before when it came to the packaging, but they're lightweight. They're not too heavy. I did travel with this uh, when you guys saw me um, with uh, Yachty Beauty. And I just think that they did such a beautiful job on this particular palette. Annette did her thing and Tina, the fancy face, did her thing as well because the Hummingbird palette is wonderful. It is beautiful. She also has a duochrome called Fancy. And this story, it just takes you on a trip to Jamaica. Like you are happy. You are happy. You have some Beautiful, bold colors. Tina is known for bold makeup aesthetics, and so is Annette. I mean, but the shades that you would kind of think that might be intimidating with hibiscus, but if you actually mix it with red hills, it gives a nice effect. You get a little bit more red, brown, kind of lighten up the shade red hills. The shade Star Apple is a wonderful color to put in the outer corner, outer V. It gives a nice definition. It pairs well with the blue. It pairs well with this purple. It pairs well with this aquamarine. And I haven't used it with this particular uh, shade Feathers, but it's wonderful. Now, Feathers is really smooth. So it's the duochrome fancy hummingbird and swallowtail and beach sand. So this, this, and this, they are a little bit more textured and thicker. So you will have to use uh, like a reference P21 or you'll have to use your fingers or your have to use some type of Sephora glitter liner in order for that color to really pick up because when you're going to swatch with your finger on your arm is you'll be like oh my gosh it's beautiful but when you try to put it on your face you might feel like Ooh, what is happening here? So you're going to need those type of brushes because, and just be careful how much you pack on your brush because you can get substantial amount of fallout. But if you just use a little bit, you'll get great pigmentation and you'll get great sparkle and shine. So they are beautiful shimmers. But like I said, they are a little bit thicker in nature, have a little bit more sparkle to them. Also, uh, have a little stickier consistency. So versus the shade Tropics and Feathers, those are more of your traditional shimmers. But overall, I mean, the color story is gorgeous. I mean, even if you're not like conceptual about certain color stories, you do get a lot of different looks here. Even the shade right here, which is clear blue, it does pair nice. It's a nice transition for a lot of these shades. Or you could just go ahead and use it as an accent palette. And I think that a lot of people, sometimes when they look at stuff like this, they're like, uh, I don't know how to plan a look, but it's a gorgeous palette. You definitely need it in your collection. And once again, like the packaging, mm, stunning. And then, you know, they did scarves with it. So, huh, so freaking good. The next palette up is the Blend Bunnies Cosmetic Surge Palette. So I saw this palette and I was like, yes, please give it to me. So I tried out their first palette, which was the Blend Bunny. Um, yeah, I think it was just Blend Bunnies. Yeah. So, or was it Blend? Yeah, it was Blend. Okay. So they're more rainbow palette, but this one just took it up a notch and took the grunge there. So you might be thrown off by the neons. I hear a lot of people say they're thrown off by the neons. They're throwing off some of the pastels, but I'm not sure why. I mean, the neons just give a nice pop of color that you weren't really quite expecting without having... I mean, you could dull them down. You could blend out some of the darker masks with it. So it's just nice. You could put them on the lid, get that nice bolt pop. These mattes are so beautiful. You have definitely a clear color story and basically all the rolls, except for this roll right here, because you have the neon yellow, the white, the black, green, and then this champagne shade. But I mean, you can just go straight down the row and get great looks. I did look with all purple, all purple and pinks. 
it was beautiful it was light it was like the versatility of this palette is unmatched so yes it gets deep dark and grungy but yes you can make some really nice fun flirty looks with the palette as well if you're not and then I mean just mattes like this I don't have mattes like this in my collection if I do I would definitely prefer these they layer so well on top of each other I use this palette also in my look I blend like a dream. You're not going to get muddy shades. You're going to be able to see the definition and colors. And some of my favorite mattes are this shade because I just don't have anything like Rush or Chills and um, maybe Linger in my uh, collection. I have some of the other shades, but they, I mean, they're just gorgeous. These two kind of look alike, but... Mm -mm. they are here to pack a punch and then like I said the neon shades that I mean they can give a little bit of staining but I did not experience much but they really help just bring out the special of uhness of these particular rolls right here I just I mean they're beautiful then let's get into the row of shimmers so that is something different that they did this time around the shimmers are absolutely stunning like are you kidding me like so good this shade euphoric mm, beautiful this shade flash which is the champagne shade I mean these shades are so creamy so good like lay down effortless I was just a little I was shocked I was like I don't know why I was shocked but they never did shimmers before so I was like I didn't know what to expect but hmm Honey, this is a one and done palette. Like you don't have to do anything else. The gold, I kind of ran out of fingers. The gold and the fuchsia, honey, forget about it. This palette is beautiful. And I actually was able to get this palette with using my American Express points. So, you know, they had it linked up to Amazon Pay. So I was like, oh, yeah, basically, you know, kind of got it for free. Well, you know, not really because, you know been charging stuff on the Amex. That's a different story. So, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, so, I mean, you know, if you have some points, so you're not trying to, you know, pay out of pocket. I want to say this was in the 40 something dollar range. I will leave it down below in the description box. This, this is an excellent buy. And even though it looks like a big palette, it's not very big. You're, it's able to be stored really well. Let me see. Uh, Okay, so for reference, this is the Juvia's Place Wale. So it's not that much bigger. And you know, usually really big palettes, I'm like, eh, not here for it. But for this, these type of sh matte shades, I'm all about it. All right, and last but certainly not least is mm, this bad boy right here. This is Celestial Odyssey. Huh. So beautiful. Do I have enough size? It's like, let's can we get it together? <laughs> okay. So beautiful. This is so Mothership Mega Celestial Odyssey by Pat McGrath Labs. This is her holiday palette. Beautiful 18 palette. Okay, I got this so quickly. Like the shipping was just like, wait, what? I was sad because I didn't get a shipping confirmation, but it showed up at my door at seven o'clock on a Saturday night after just going on sale on a Thursday. So, mm, so happy. Couldn't even believe it. But this palette feels great. It's heavy. It's substantial. She kept the price point the same as last year. So $78. Got the 10% off for, you know, uh, ordering it on lunch day. I'm, and you, if this feels like Pat McGrath luxury, even though there is a sticker on the back, it's placed correctly. It's smooth. It's flush to the packaging. So I don't have an issue with that. The names seem a little tricky. They're low inverted. So that's neither here or there. There are beautiful formulas in here and it does have a really nice mirror. I still have the sticker on it. So you do have the ribbons, but, mm, but you have some beautiful shades in this palette that you can just do some some wide variety of looks in it. And not to mention, you have the lacquer. So you're getting like that Pat McGrath luxury tin pan experience or Lux Quad experience or even with the blushes now within this palette that has uh, the 18 shades. So I love it because 
it just this reads Pat McGrath. I love the layout. I like how she has her emblem in the middle. And I think the color story just makes so much sense. You can get some nice pops of color. Right here you have a Nirvana. Beautiful shade. I mean, and it's smooth. I mean, come on. Come on. Come on. And then also the shade Noir Moon. I believe this is more of an iridescent shade. But it has all the pigment in the world. This is not looking iridescent. And what's nice about this shade, because it is a metallic, you can go ahead and deepen up your looks with this. Mm, it's like a cross between a black and a navy blue. It definitely has some nice little small glitter particles in there, but they are beautiful. Not to mention, let's see what other shade. Oh, of course, Citrine Envy. Uh, and this was a 24 karat dual chrome sparkler or something like that. <laughs> so gorgeous once again. And you have some beautiful matte options. So this one does go a little bit deeper than you would think, which is Nocturne. And in the Saturn Sunset, you also have Electric and Sunrose Amber. This is Sunrose Amber. And then this is Electric. And then another favorite shade of mine is got to be the shade, let's see, let's get it right, let's get it right, Lotus Luxe. No, right? Uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. <sighs> Help. <laughs> I can't figure out the names. All right, I, I got it after I've confused myself thoroughly. So Lotus Lux, this shade right here. Oh my God, it's just so beautiful. It's like a gray purple shade. Ah, so, so pretty. And mm, this would just be kind of a bomb look. It's yeah, that's a cute color story there. Um, but the shades in here are, are wonderful. Of course, this palette performs beautifully. I mean, I have had no issues working with it. I've been wearing it to work. I've been wearing it out. Uh, I wore it uh, when I did the video or actually the makeup and chill with Yachty Beauty. And uh, I use actually the shade Corrupt Copper as my orange shade when I did my tribute to Mel Thompson. So, I mean, it's just endless possibilities. I think this is good color story that's just going to, you know, speak to a large variety of people. It's neutral. You got pops of color, lots of different finishes. I, it, it was done so well. And I'm so happy because I felt like she redeemed herself after the whole... Utopian hue. What is that? Utopian dreams. Divine Rose 3 palette. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anywho. So those are the four palettes that I just finished reviewing for you guys. I am in love, but oh, if I had to make, okay, for the sake of the argument, let's just see if we can try to rank them. Hmm. I don't, I'm not quite sure about this, but I would say this. Okay. I would go Annette. As number one, I would do Tina as number two. I would do Celestial Odyssey number three and Surge number four. I don't know. I don't know. That, that's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> so I hope you guys have enjoyed the reviews on these four palettes. Let me know. Did you pick up anything? I think these palettes are so wonderful. Kind of got to be like part of my favorites for the year, honestly. And mm, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on this look. Leave me a comment down below because you know, I love chatting it up in the comments with you. Give this video a big thumbs up, hit the notification bell so you know when I come out with another video, which will be very, very soon. And please subscribe to my channel because you know I would love to have you here in my little makeup family. Mm. And with all of that being said, you already know how we end the videos around this part. We gotta hit it with the chedis, chedis, ay, 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 chedis, Bye.